This video is going to discuss checking assumptions of linear models. Now, it's my opinion that two of the most important assumptions behind multiple linear regression are, uh, and in order, appropriateness of model. That is, if you have some blob of like a cloud of data, and there's no obvious relationship given the data between your response variable y and some explanatory variables x, and you don't even know a logical theory that would relate y to x, then fitting a line through y to x is probably not going to tell you much. If you don't have theory to go along with your empirical evidence, then fitting a model to these data is probably not reasonable. Moreover, if you're trying to fit a line through obviously nonlinear data, then that's probably not a good strategy. And in fact, that's going to be the example we're going to use later on in this video. Further, if you're trying to fit a line through some sort of like incredibly wiggly data, then you're probably not fitting an appropriate model. So there's a number of different ways appropriateness of model can be broken. In this video, we're going to focus on fitting a line through obviously curvy data and how uh, we can develop a more appropriate model. OK, so appropriateness of model is my first uh, assumption, first of the important assumptions for multiple linear regression. The second one is um, there's an inherent assumption in multiple linear regression of normality. Now, actually, breaking normality is not terrible because the central limit theorem will often help us out. But the effect of potential outliers um, or symmetry of the residuals, or let's say lack thereof of symmetry of the residuals, is going to be an, a strong assumption that we're going to need. We don't want large potential outliers, and we want symmetry of the residuals. So let's see. I'm going to put potential outliers as bad, and let's say non-symmetry of residuals is also bad. So now the second assumption is we don't want potential outliers and non-symmetry of the residuals. In this video, I'm going to advocate two plots to help us check the assumptions here. And the first one is a little funky because you calculate the residuals from your model, and then you plot the residuals on the y-axis and your estimated uh, response variable on the x-axis. You put y-hat on the x-axis and residuals on the y-axis. Now, if your model's reasonable, all of your residuals will be centered at zero, as I've tried to indicate on this plot. And you will have just a cloud of points, just completely evenly defined around zero, no obvious patterns to this specific plot. Everything just looks like a cloud of points smashed on this plot. And that is good. This is what we want this plot to look like. Residuals just completely uh, randomly scattered about along the x-axis, which has y hat on it. That is good. The second plot I'm going to recommend is a density plot of the residuals. And again, we want relatively symmetric and not huge um, outliers in this plot. So before we jump into R, let me show you what a couple of bad plots will look like. We use this first page as what we want these two plots to look like, what we want these two plots to look like. And we'll use this follow-up page to represent um, a bad representation of one. So a bad representation of the first plot could look like this. If there's any kind of angle to the data or any kind of slope that is bad. It's telling us we have fit an inappropriate model through our data. Now, I don't care if there's actually a negative slope or a positive slope. Any kind of slope 
or really any kind of pattern like this would tell us that we have fit an inappropriate model. So, okay, there was a few examples of some bad ones. Let's try again, because there's other ways that this first plot can look bad. So on this top one, we'll say no pattern, and that is positive or negative or um, exponential increasing or exponential decreasing or even maybe like a U shape. We don't want any kind of pattern in this plot of the residuals. Um, another example of ways the first plot can go wrong is if you have some sort of cone shape in your residuals. If you have a plot that looks like this, where the variance of the residuals is increasing along the um, x-axis representing y hat, that is bad. Similarly, if you have residuals that are decreasing along the x-axis, that is bad. So a similar sort of idea here, the variance changes along the x-axis. In both of these cases, these are bad. Our model for linear regression has some mean, I'll just put a placeholder here, and then a variance. And notice the variance term is never indexed by n in the way we've defined multiple linear regression. But here this plot is showing us that for small values of y hat, we have a large variance. And for large values of y hat, we have a small variance. So this residuals plot is indicating to us that our assumed fixed variance is not true. Okay, so in either of these two cases, we have an inappropriate model. And this plot is really good at showing us how our model has gone wrong, such that we might need to build a more sophisticated model. Okay, let's give some examples of bad density plots of the residuals. So if you're putting residuals on the x-axis, you could break symmetry. And that would be an example of an inappropriate model. And again, you could break symmetry by having skew right residuals or skew left residuals or even multimodal residuals. That would be an example of some bad stuff going on. But even if symmetry was met, you could break the assumption by having, look, your residuals are going to be centered at zero. And if most of your data shows up, let's say, within magnitude of the order one, like within 10, but then way over here, you have some observations that stretch out orders of magnitude in either direction, that's going to scream that you have some potential outliers. Most of your data might show up here, and that seems reasonable. But if you have a few observations way out in the tails, and those tails are extreme, like orders of magnitude different, then that's going to tell you you might have some potential outliers. So this is what we want our plots to look like. Let's see if we can create an example in R that shows these issues uh, clearly. So over here in R, I'm continuing to work with the library ggplot2, the data set cars, where here I've put weight as an explanatory variable for miles per gallon, the response variable on a plot. And in this first go of it, I'm just going to fit a linear model. The tough part about inappropriateness of models is that R does not yell at you if you fit a line through, I'm going to suggest, obviously curvy data. But when you look at this model, 
it doesn't look right. And here, let me help you see why this model doesn't look right. When we're calculating residuals, we're going to take an observed value, y, and we're going to subtract off what our model predicts. So here is a positive residual. Here is an example of a negative residual, because what we observed minus what we predicted is negative. So here's a positive residual, and here's a negative residual. Now notice what we're seeing in this plot. We have a bunch of positive residuals and not many negative residuals for small values of weight. But as we move into medium values of weight, we get almost no positive residuals and many negative residuals. And as we continue along the x-axis, we suddenly shift back to many positive residuals and few negative residuals. So that's going to indicate to us that we don't have a great fit going through these data. Let's see what that analysis looks like in terms of uh, the plots we discussed earlier. So it turns out there's a function named predict that will calculate for you your y hat values from a fitted object. I haven't yet told us about that, but it's a handy function. And then we can calculate residuals from, let's see, mpg city minus y hat. And then let's create a new um, data frame. We'll name it DFA, -A, DFA for assumptions. Data frame, we're going to put uh, y hat as the variable y hat, and we'll name the residuals vector r inside our data frame. And then we go to ggplot, pass in the data set, aes, we want, okay, here's where we got to remember. On the x axis, we want y hat. On the y axis, we want the residuals. Let's make a point plot here. Oops, wrong data frame. There we go. Now, if we look at this plot where all of our residuals should be centered around zero, we see exactly what we were talking about before. First, a bunch of positive and no negative residuals, and then a bunch of negative residuals and no positive residuals, and then mostly positive residuals and few negative residuals. There is clearly some kind of curve pattern going on here. And remember, the pattern in this specific plot is bad. There's clearly some kind of curve pattern going on here, indicating to us that we probably fit an inappropriate model. OK, let's move on to our second plot. We'll use the right data frame this time, AES. All we need to do is uh, plug in the residuals, and then we'll ask for a density plot. And indeed, look what we have here. This is both not very symmetric and quite a long right tail, indicating not only do we have more positive residuals than negative, we also have some potential outliers way up here near 10. OK, so if we go back through and look at our original plot again, the inappropriateness shows up. Let's just make the plot again. The inappropriateness shows up in that we've tried to fit a line through, I'm going to argue, obviously curve, curved data. So one thing we could do is just explore how well a quadratic term helps this model. I'm going to argue that actually helps quite a bit. Maybe it's not uh, really curved enough, but this is probably going to improve our plot much better than we had before. So let's see how this is going to look in terms of our plots. OK, what we've got here for our first plot 
is data mostly centered and randomly scattered about zero at all values along the x-axis. The only thing that really stands out is this one observation way up here. And you know what that one observation way up here is going to tell us, since residuals are on the y-axis, is that we have one potential outlier that seem, doesn't seem to fit the rest. And this next plot should tell us a very similar story. Most of our data shows up between negative 5 and 5, and then nothing. This is a flat line at 0 until way out here at like 11. We get this one potential outlier. So I'm not going to suggest this model is perfect, where we have fit a, a polynomial of no more than degree 2 through our data, but I think it's certainly an improvement over a line through these data, and it's really helpful to determine that we needed something more sophisticated than a line through the data using these two plots. Now, the one last point I want to address here in the end is this was sort of an easy analysis to go through and see the benefit of these plots because we could look at what these plots told us relative to the original data. But if you start getting more complicated multiple linear regression models, you could have multiple numerical explanatory variables. And suddenly looking at the response variable by each of your numerical explanatory variables can get very cumbersome. But what's nice about the way these two models have been, or these two plots have been developed, is that y hat here is actually a function of all of the explanatory variables. So y hat here is really just a fancy function of the combination of all of your numerical explanatory variables which makes these two plots totally reasonable to use even when you're getting into the world of multiple linear regression and you have many numerical or categorical explanatory variables.